Hi, and welcome to Coffee with Claire. You know, in today's digital era, it's really easy to stay behind your computer and send out lots of texts and emails and things like that. And that's great because you've got one to many. It's cheap, it's efficient. However, it doesn't really portray your personality. And so one of the things that I like to do is to get out and network. And networking is a really important part of being a business owner because that's the only way that people are going to see the passion that you have for your product or your service. People buy from people they know and trust. And how are they going to get to know you if you're always in the office? So I try to go to at least three networking events a week. And it's very purposeful. I go, I meet people, I collect their business cards, and I make sure that I follow up with them when I'm done. It's kind of like going to see your favorite rock band. Is it more exciting to go to see them at the, on the stage and have them singing directly to you so you feel all that excitement and all the other people that are around you? Or is it more exciting to watch them on a YouTube video? So the, the choice is yours. However, I do challenge you to choose a networking event. Try one. Try one this week and um, make it very purposeful. Take your business cards, make sure that you exchange them, and then follow up. Let me know how you're doing on our Coffee with Claire Facebook page. As you know, I'm always looking for entrepreneurs, people who give back to the community, and people who like to have fun. And today I'm excited to welcome Paul Maynard. Paul Maynard is known here in the North Texas area as the Relentless Networker. He is a independent marketing, communications, and business development specialist, and he specializes in building and managing relationships. He's an active blogger and speaker, and so we are excited to learn from him about networking today. So, welcome, Paul Maynard. Thank you, Claire Billingsley. <laughs> So, uh, Paul, there's so much social media out there. You know, there's Facebook, there's, you know, the blogging places. Twitter, there's, Instagram, Yeah, all, all of that of stuff. stuff. So, um, what, why do I need to get out and, and network? I mean, you know, that is a network. Well, yeah, but they're, they're just tools. That's, okay. Those are just things to help facilitate doing this. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about making face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one connections. And that's really what we should be doing. So when you say face-to-face, -face, um, are you meaning like FaceTime or are you mean in person? Oh, in person. Okay. Absolutely in person. You go to the networking group, you go to your association meeting, you go to your chamber of commerce meeting, those networking events that you belong to. Those are the ways that you make connections with people because it takes anywhere from three to six to nine times for people to get to know you. Wow. And they have to learn you by, they have to learn, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, when you think about it, when you're at a networking event, um, you only have a very short amount of time to spend with anybody. You know, it's like, you know, you meet that person, you meet, get interrupted, you meet somebody else, or, you know, so it's kind of like this ebb and flow kind of a thing. Absolutely. So I understand what you're saying when you have to be there three to six to nine times for them to really have that stamp in their head. It's like, oh, that's Paul Maynard, or oh, that's Claire Billingsley, you know, and, and, um, Actually, I think when somebody, um, when you've kind of succeeded in a networking event, somebody else can introduce you to someone oh, else. Absolutely. You know, isn't that amazing? That's when that the happens? best thing. It's, it's been wonderful. I've had people actually give my elevator speech to someone else introducing me. Yeah. Maybe I've spent too much time with them, <laughs> but it also means that hey, at least they listened. Right. Well, they listened and they retained the information. Yes. And so they can actually be um, a spokesperson for you when you're not around. Oh, hey, absolutely. I know this guy who who can help you with you know blah blah blah. You know, call this guy. So, um, networking is kind of a funny thing, though, because you know some people go like it's a party. You know, like it's it's a happy hour. I'm just going to go out and hang out with some friends. Um, so, what? How do you how do you recommend people get ready mentally to go and be have a very successful networking event? Well, you really need to be purposeful about going to an event. Okay. You need to be prepared ahead of time. It's like any other thing. There are people who go to networking events unprepared. Mm -hmm. um, I just uh, just recently ran into a young woman at an event. She had a hit list. She knew who she was going to talk to oh, when wow. she got to that event. Uh, and, and she had a, a script, basically. She knew what she was going to say. She knew who she was going to look at. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, at the end of the event, she had a, a scorecard as such. She knew who she'd spoken to and who she wanted to engage with. 
That is really smart. And, you know, a lot of times if you're going to a meetup event, it, when you go on to the meetup site, you actually see who's attending on the yes. side there. Um, and, and so I think other networking opportunities have that kind of... of a oh, absolutely. And if you get to know an event or you've been to an association, let's say you know a chamber of commerce, if you spend enough time mm -hmm. with a particular chamber of commerce, then you'll get to know who the membership is and who those key people that might be there. If you go to an annual meeting, they might have certain executives or city officials that you want to engage with, right. and they'll be there, and you make a point of connecting with them. So um, when you go to networking events, what are some of the um, rules, or are there any rules? I mean, you know, like I do improv, and we say that we have rules even though we're making it up on the spot. So, you know, in networking, you're kind of improvising as you go. But oh, are absolutely. There, but are there some rules that you might recommend for people to follow? Well, it's, it, it's very important to remember that, that networking is – is, a, is a, an activity that has to keep you, you have to be ready for it and you have to be on top of it. And it actually can be somewhat exhausting, but like you and I always do, we keep our energy up. Uh, rules of thumb, I've made lists, uh, people that know me, there's lists, there's laws, there's guidelines, but truthfully, there's several. There's three things that I always tell people is that you need to be patient when you go someplace. Okay. And the second thing is you need to be persistent, but most of all when you go God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. And it's not about you. <laughs> That's the most important thing you need to remember in any conversation, whether it's in person or it's it's otherwise. It's not about you. Ask more questions than you volunteer information, mm. and you'll learn much more. But in terms of going to an event, come prepared. Make sure you have business cards. Never leave without business cards. Oh, my gosh, that drives me crazy. Oh. I went to two networking events last week, and there were people who was like, oh, well, I forgot my card. <laughs> Why are you here? Yeah, why are you here? <laughs> what are you doing? This is the last piece. We talk about all this digital communication. Mm -hmm. The truth is, is that that's the last piece of printed collateral that seems to matter anymore. And you have to have a get. If you do get your business cards, make sure you can write on the back yeah. because you want people to make notes about you. Yeah, having that glossy stuff on both sides is horrible oh, unless you write works. with a sharpie. Exactly, and it's the only thing that's going to stick on it. So, but you know, take your business cards. Uh, be prepared to take, give your elevator speech. Know who you're going to meet before you get there. Know the, about the organization that you're going to be there, uh, that you're going to, so that you can engage the people that are there. Be polite to your host. Uh, be oh, gracious. It, what a nice idea. Say, <laughs> say hello and thank you for the invitation. Yeah, this is their event after all, and they've gone <laughs> to the trouble, so you may as well thank them. And you don't know how far a thank you goes. You know, I always tell people to be polite. I say, I'm, I'm going to sound like your mother now. I want you to be polite. Say please and thank you. And it's just lost on people. Common courtesy, uh, I wrote a blog not too long ago about the death of common courtesy, but I really don't believe that. Let's believe get it. let's give it some resuscitation. Let's yeah. let's let it a little CPR. live. Yes, a little CPR for the uh, networking. <laughs> <laughs> for common courtesy. Yes, for common courtesy because um, you know, saying please and thank you are probably besides your name the the kindest words that you can hear. Mm -hmm. You know, and the things that make you really want to go the extra mile for somebody. Well, and if you're listening to people, be able to engage them in conversation and know what the next question is. It's one thing to go and ask, but you really need to actively engage in terms of be an active listener. That means using eye contact, mm -hmm. and that means listening carefully and then knowing what the next question is, meaning that you've actually paid attention to what they said so you know what the next question is. Yeah, rather than just thinking of the next thing that you want to say. Well, and there's those old urban myths about the man who went to the uh, networking event and didn't, and unless someone asked about him, he didn't volunteer any information about him. He went and spent the evening talking to people about them. And when he left, people said, that was the most interesting man I'd ever met. <laughs> right, because he asked questions about, about them that. and they got yeah. to talk about and themselves. And that's really what it is. It's about engaging people on their terms. And if you catch the right people and the people you really want to engage with, they'll ask back. Yeah. So um, let's say I'm a business owner and I've already got work coming in. Why do I need to go out and network and get more? Well, everybody in a company is in sales, whether we know it or not. And the next thing you have to do is you have to keep that pipeline full. And you're, we talked about those three, six, and nine times mm -hmm. before people get to know you. Right. If they're only on step two, well, then you're not going to be closing anytime soon. So you need to have people in the various stages uh, of engagement. And that's what networking is all about. It's an active thing. And if you're a small business owner, there's only five of you in the company, I know that's very difficult. But you have to look at the next thing. Where is the next work going to come from? Because the work that you have, while it has to be done at a high level, uh, you 
do have to be looking for the next the next gig, as we always say. Yeah, you know, I've I've um, seen business owners do that kind of start stop start stop thing to where you know they they pour everything into that one project and they're not filling the pipeline like you're like you're talking exactly. about, and then they have nothing, which is really scary. So you know, keeping keeping busy out there and, and just letting the, like these little trickle effects let people know that you're still there that you still care that you still want to help them you know i think you know helps you keep things moving forward we always talk about being and I always do this top of mind right between the eyes you want people to know who you are top of mind and and that's why social media is a great <laughs> yes it is social media is a great way to be top of mind right? you're active in fact we've experienced that with you claire people mm -hmm. talk about you because you're active on the various social media platforms people find you that way and they're talking about claire and that's what you need to be doing they talk about you and then they'll get to the point where when the need comes along they'll remember you so um, how does networking help with branding because you kind of alluded to that with the coffee with Claire how does how does all the social network and out you know meeting people how does all that work together in building a company's brand well a brand isn't just a logo or, co or colors uh, of what a company looks like or what the name on the side of the building is the mm -hmm. brand is your essence and what your clientele thinks of you and how you compose your your elevator speech and how you present yourself and how your the people that represent your company present themselves is all part of your brand and that's how you reach out in networking and by being out there on a consistent basis that presents your brand and makes you memorable this is all about memorability right so if I'm starting out where do I find networking groups and who do I network with well, start with people that you know, but okay. the, the rule of thumb that I always say is go where your clients are. If you're in a business that is looking to do business with manufacturers, mm -hmm. try to find an association of those manufacturers. Okay. If you can be part of that. That makes sense. But if you're if you're in a if you're just starting out and you want to get to know a community, hang out with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, go volunteer to support uh, various nonprofits. We've been talking about nonprofits lately and, and different uh, uh, organizations that need help. It's a great way to connect with the community. You get to know the community. It gets back to that, I, I'm doing business with somebody that I know, like, and trust. Right. So, um, so Paul is a blogger. He's also got a website. So why don't you let everybody know how they can find you? and um, interact with you. Oh, thank you. Maybe you even network with you. <laughs> Different ways you can find me. <laughs> Cut can, them down like My website dog. is also my blog, mm -hmm. which is paulemaynard.com. Don't forget the E. Okay. And then I'm on Twitter, quite active on Twitter, with at Paul E. Maynard, actually, Paul E.M. 53. Okay. Uh, also on LinkedIn as well. Uh, and then we use some other vehicles. Uh, uh, we have uh, Harry Discovers, mm -hmm. who is another sub-brand of mine. That's my uh, curious Texas Terrier, who has a lot of friends and a lot of connections. And so there's different ways to find me. Uh, typically, you'll find me out at a networking event, but you'll find examples of my work and who I am, uh, either through the social media or on my website. Well, Paul, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been very educational. And it's always been a lot of fun to be around you, Claire. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So today we're going to play the game of pillars, and I have Shelby and Ellen here helping us with Paul. And with this, we're going to get a suggestion from the audience, and um, Paul and I will be just interacting, having a conversation, and every now and then we'll hesitate, and we'll ask by touching one of the pillars for them to add a word for us to use and incorporate into our conversation. All right? So from the audience, we need to have a suggestion of um, a story that's never been told before. I haven't heard that one either. The <laughs> silence is golden yeah, is uh, what I heard. Yes, silence. <laughs> All right, silence is golden. All right. So, players, are you ready? Ready. Yes. You know, it's amazing when I work from home that it is so quiet in my office. I love it. I used to work in this really big... Factory. Factory, where it was so noisy. It was like sensory overload. It was like being at Chuck E. Cheese's and being a little kid. I hated it. In fact, it made me... Gag. Gag. Like, totally. Like, gag with a spoon. It made me, like, think about the 80s. And then I just danced. Then I just danced. Come on, oh, dance Oh, you're not going to get me to dance. <laughs> oh. But you're going to get me to... Cha-cha. Cha-cha? Okay, well, then we can probably very try good. that. Very good. You're we very good We can probably try that, that but, then, oh. but then I might trip and... 
fall. Oh, well, I don't know if I'd fall. I might uh, do something else. I might... Spring into the air. Spring into the air? Yeah, like Watch Tigger. <laughs> I love Tigger. He is my favorite character of Winnie the Pooh. In fact, I was just reading the other day that... Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin had uh, a hernia. And we had to get him to the... Bartender. The bartender, because bartenders know how to fix everything, right? Absolutely. You know, the last time I was at a bar and I asked the bartender a question, he told me... Shove off. Yes, actually, he did. And, and <laughs> that'll teach me. Well, that teaches you for being at a marina. And that's time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So excited. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here, Jacqueline. So my first question for you is, we are all so busy. How do you balance fun with responsibility at work? Oh, my goodness. I have fun at work. I tell you, music and working and just excited to be. When you love what you do, your responsibility comes easy. So I love what I do. So when my responsibilities, it's fun meeting people. Awesome. So um, what are some of the fun things about growing your business? Oh, the excited things about growing the business is meeting people, collaborating with mm -hmm. them, and allowing them to know that what it is, the services that I'm offering, we can grow together. So collaborating and meeting people is fun. Well, and it gets a lot, um, it gets a lot of work done, too. It gets a lot of work done. You meet people and they begin to enjoy having fun with you. Right, so they want to help. So um, what advice could you give someone that might be struggling right now as to how to keep it fun? Oh, I would tell them to invite relaxation into their schedule. Mm. To in, invite uh, just rethinking some things and looking at it and stirring at it until they get excited about going out, rinsing and repeating it. Doing it over and over Rinse again. and repeating. Okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your business. Oh, I'm so excited. Adventure and Victory provide life skills, prayer, and, and community outreach service to low-income disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Women have an opportunity to tap into the hidden potential, unleash the power within, tap into the world, and step out in front of the world and allow them to, to share. They get to share who they really are, their authentic self. So I get excited about helping individuals grow, tap into their authentic self by providing transformational life skills. So if you were to have a happy dance or a happy stance, what would that look like? <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline. <laughs> So your challenge this week is to go to one networking event and make it very purposeful. Take your business cards, exchange business cards, and then when you get back to the office, follow up. Let me know how you're doing on our Facebook page of Coffee with Claire, and remember to follow the fun. See you next week.